Hey guys, remember this little orange and white admiral set? I restored this a couple years ago, both electrically and I repainted the cabinet. Well, since then, I have chipped it in a few places, which was educational because I think the real culprit here is I just put the paint on too thick. This is the only uh, significant piece of metal I've ever tried painting before. Now luckily the chipping is just on this front piece which comes off and I can repaint separately. But that's not what this video is about. What I wanted to talk about it's a couple other sets. One is its big brother, which I actually got a couple years ago. It was a present from a friend and I don't think I ever did a video on it. So this is a 10 inch model. This is a 14 inch model. And I think you can see that the color that I hunted around for and finally found was a pretty darn good match for the original paint, which is still on this set. Don't know much about this. I've only tested the CRT, which tested really good. Uh, I have not pulled the chassis out or anything. Just haven't had the time, but I think it's kind of neat to have the two side by side. Chassis is virtually identical. I think maybe just the flyback's a little bit different because it has to kick out a little more high voltage and a bigger deflection magnetic pulse to keep the electron beam across the screen. Someday we'll get to that and get to repainting this. But the reason I'm doing this video is because of what I just got back with tonight, which was another Craigslist find. This was something I was uh, on the fence about. For a couple weeks and finally I found myself in the neighborhood where the set was so I called the seller and luckily he was home on a Friday evening and I swung by and picked it up. Got out to be a real nice guy. We had a fun chat about it and other topics and it is another 10 inch but this is Green and uh, light green, I guess you'd say. I'm not sure exactly what colors you call that, but I think it's a real nice color combination. And there are a few other subtle differences between these two. For one, notice this piece of metal that's coming down here is much larger than the one here. I have no idea why. I think it's a separate piece of metal that's popped on. This is the UHF antenna, which is just tucked in here somehow. Alright, clips on the back. And that is another big difference, is that this is a UHF model. I don't think I was even really aware that these came with UHF. So the way it works is, there's a cutout in the VHF dial up here, which this does not have. This is plastic. I think this... This metal, or I see it's a metal cap over the white plastic. And through that hole, there are numbers that slowly turn, I think, as you rotate this outer dial, which is the UHF dial. It might be stuck. Imagine this hasn't turned in a long time. Ah, uh, but at any rate. So there must be some slight difference with the tuner inside. I'm sure it's a 6AF4 UHF oscillator mixer tube. And maybe, if it's a better design, there's an RF amp and then that probably feeds right into the VHF tuner for like a double down conversion. Channel plate's off a bit too. First I thought this was bent, but no, I think it's designed that way to follow the curve of the cabinet, whereas this one's over far enough that uh, there's no need for that. I imagine they must have had to move this over or something to fit in the UHF components below. Uh, looks like one of the brass inserts is gone. I guess they call these knob brights. If I'm lucky, I can look through my knobs and find one. Looks like these knobs are actually clear plastic. They're just very dirty. So I imagine when these are cleaned up, they'll be real nice. Speaking of cleaning it up, uh, this looks to be in excellent condition. Just dirty, and it's got the tape residue on it. If I'm <laughs> careful and use the right substances, and I can get all this tape goo off. Get some car wax on this. I think it's going to look awesome. No need to paint this. 
all around the front. Excellent. So I got this from, I believe it was the son of the original owner, his mother, and it had been kept inside all this time, maybe even in the same house. So uh, I was fairly well taken care of, even though it hadn't been used in many years. S screw missing on either side of the front metal piece, but it's not the end of the world. And unlike uh, my other two, this has an antenna. I've seen sets with them, I've seen sets without them. I get the impression it's aftermarket, because it just hooks into the screw terminals over here, but I'm not sure. And the UHF somehow, I guess, attaches. Or maybe you just stick it into these tubes here. Definitely the way that see on here it says UHF VHF. He says he didn't plug it in, doesn't know if it works. Uh, I'll take his word for that. Uh, I don't expect it would work if it had been plugged in. Now, that's one bad thing. The original power cord must have gone bad at some point, and somebody just ripped it out of there to get this new cheater cord in there and butchered up the metal. Um, but I'll just have to do what I can. I don't want to refinish this or anything so oh wait now I remember yeah that's right he said that uh, this set was purchased up in Wisconsin and I can see that Milwaukee Wisconsin no doubt that was the original uh, place it was purchased I'm guessing and let's see the model oh, a little hard <laughs> I think it's a T105. There were um, at least half a dozen of these with different colors, and each different color is given a different model number. So that's a 103. I think this is a 105. So, you know what I want to do first? Pop the back off and test the picture tube. If it's bad, I will have to begin the hunt. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen one of these 10 inch CRTs for sale, but. I know they made a lot of these sets, and there's a very, very similar looking GE and a Hot Point and other manufacturers. They may have used similar CRTs that are compatible, I don't know. I don't even recall what the number is. I want to say 10 HP4, but uh, uh, that's probably not right. I'll just get this up on the workbench and let's see for sure. Here it is in some better lighting up on the workbench. I really like this color combination. And it's in such nice condition. As for the model, I was right, it is a 105. Well, down there, TS 105 ALN. I imagine the various letters are different options. 105 is the key. It's just dirt. I don't think there are any chips on this paint job. Cheap white flux, probably latex paint. I'll get that off. Now, I do have some products like Goof Off, but I've come to learn that not the greatest thing to use. Uh, I tried using this in a cabinet that had a lacquer finish and it, uh, with a big glop of latex paint. Yeah, it dissolves the latex paint, but did a pretty bad number on the finish, too. I believe this has some acetone in it, and that uh, is not compatible with some paints and finishes, so got to be careful. What I will start out with is, I think, just some isopropyl alcohol. I've had better luck with this. It takes a lot longer, but uh, it's, uh, it's pretty uh, inert stuff. Doesn't doesn't really attack. Oh, it finishes too badly. Oh, one scuff. One scuff down there, down to the bare metal. Recall how my other set is too. You can see that underneath this, it's the same color as this. They probably painted the whole thing one color and then masked some of it off and did the lighter color, which is a bit counterintuitive to me. I would paint the whole thing the light color, mask it off, and then do the dark color down here, but whatever. Some scuffs here and there. 
probably be very, very difficult to find an exact match for this color, so I think I'll just live with that. Alright, oh well, uh, and as far as the antenna goes, it's in excellent condition. Usually these rabbit ears get all bent and twisted and mangled. There's a slight bend to it right there, but otherwise, it's like it's brand new. Okay, so to get this out, I'm going to take a screw off of either side. I think that might be it, although, as I recall, this is uh, fits pretty darn tightly into this outer bit, and you're really going to tug on it, so... Well, I'll try to be careful. I don't want to chip the paint when I'm pulling it off. After I took the two screws out, the back just fell right out, so no problems there. CRT is a 10ABP4. Don't see any info about the UHF tuner, so that might not be included in this tube chart. Hmm. Alright, so the insides. Well, I'll see something bad right away. It's a brightener. I guess I've been pretty darn lucky with my set so far. I can only think of two times I've found a brightener before. One was my RCA. 621TS and that uh, the CRT was completely dead, the filament was open so the brightener was kind of irrelevant. And the other one I think has a brightener because it has, the CRT has a heater to cathode short and I think the uh, brightener is really there for more for isolation than to boost the filament voltage. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and test the CRT anyways. Although, that's not looking so good either. Because this cap is at an odd angle. And it's incredibly loose. CRT face didn't have a usual cat's eye. What you get when the neck cracks and the uh, vacuum is lost and air rushing and blows the phosphor off the face of the CRT. So this might just be a really, really loose base. So I am very gingerly going to try to get this thing apart and see what's what. I managed to carefully get the brightener out of this set. It's the most common brand, I think, at least the most common I've seen. Permapower series means it's for series filament wired sets. No other information uh, other than the model C402. I don't know if it's a booster or an isolation type or what the deal is. But pretty good bet it's for boosting. No, that's for the CRT. Yeah, that base is extremely loose. I've seen that logo before. Uh, Video Corp, National Video Corporation, yeah. It's probably not the original CRT. Oh, it might be, who knows. Uh, what is up with this wiring? Well, I am going to just get out soldering iron and the desoldering braid and just hit these pins because uh, it's hanging on but just barely and I don't want to uh, mess with it. Uh, I'll just have to I guess, save that for another day to do some delicate surgery but if I get this off I can at least test it and see if it's even worth uh, messing with anymore. With the aid of some desoldering braid I did get the base off and it is indeed a National Video Corporation. The uh, substance, epoxy, whatever the phenol resin they use to attach this to the base, is actually in pretty good shape. I'm not sure why it failed. But also, the base itself doesn't look too bad. All the pins are still there, nothing broke off. And I was wondering what that was for, then I remembered that this set uses electrostatic focus. And that's what the strap is for on the bottom here. You can either attach it between these two pins or these two pins and there's no electromagnetic focus, no focus control so that's what that extra pin is for 
All right, first thing I'll do is grab my uh, multimeter here and see if we have filament continuity. I'm wondering if just the, maybe the weight of that brightener, or when somebody installed it, they wouldn't really used a lot of force on this. I'm not sure what broke the base off. Oh, let's see. Which two pins are filament on the other side of the key? Like so. Blah, blah. Be these two guys. All right. Well, at least that's something. 1.5 ohms. We have filament continuity. Again, with the brightener. I, know, I can always try rejuvenating this. Maybe the guy who used the brightener, maybe they didn't run it for long after the brightener was installed. Maybe it can reju be rejuvenated. Who knows. But at least we got filament continuity. If we can produce any kind of a picture, that's a huge plus while well, I try to hunt down a uh, better one. And then assuming this doesn't test good at all, needless to say, if anybody out there has a 10 ABP4, we need to talk. As I recall, the one in my other orange and white set isn't so hot either. Alright, next up comes the CR70, and let's see what we get. Generally speaking, this universal adapter with its little clips is inconvenient to use. But not in this case. When the base is gone, they came in handy. Clip them out of those little ends. I hope I'm making good contact there. We'll find out in a moment. Uh, hmm. Can't tell if anything is glowing or not. Pretty good sign though, because uh, I don't know, I can't tell. Usually when the filament's disconnected, or when it is connected, there's a little bit of a load on the tester. So I just disconnected the filament for sure. And now it's acting like there's no load. When there's a typical current load on the CR70, when you're in the 6 range, crank it all the way up, it won't go up this high. So either I just burned out the filament, or I'm not making good contact. Oh, I saw sparks. Oh, now it's lighting up. Alright. See now I'm way down to four. It's definitely loading it down. Alright, that is a glow for sure. No HK short. So that's my, the one CRT where I found a brightener that had a definite HK short, which is a very bad thing. G1 short. Cut off. I expected nothing, and I have virtually nothing. It's moving a little. It's climbing a little. Emissions. Not as bad as I expected, and it's still climbing, so we'll let this sit for a while. And if this gets anywhere up near green, it's got to make me wonder why they put a brightener on this set. Unless it was just, uh, you know, who knows, people. If the set was getting old and clunky, maybe for a couple bucks they figured they could get a much brighter picture out of it, even though... Didn't really need it. Well, it's also entirely possible that the lowered brightness was because of something else being wrong, like the brightness control or resistor drifted up in value, and instead of troubleshooting and fixing the set, oh, let's just put a brightener on. And these aren't the easiest things to service. you got to do a bit of work to get this chassis out and then to get up these circuit boards and replace components. Yeah, we're definitely getting up towards the green. Huh. Maybe it's my lucky day after all. And I'm only at 6.3, I think. I didn't, uh... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not pushing the filament at all. So 
Huh, how about that? I'm still climbing and climbing, but I'm doing a mission life test right now, just for the heck of it. Okay, the life test stinks. <laughs> but uh, it's not like I'm going to be watching this thing for hours every day anyways. Well, I'll, I'll let this sit for a few minutes and come back to the video. I'll we'll see where it's at. It's been about 15 minutes and the emissions aren't climbing anymore, but hey, well into the green. Life test. Stinks, but... Uh, I don't think it's all that great my other set, and that has a decent picture. And as for cutoff... Okay, we got some cutoff control. Yeah, this this will be perfectly usable on 6.3 volts, no question. So again, I don't know why they have the brightener on there. So I'm in the proper cutoff range, emissions, I'm in the green, so hey. So now what's left is to perform the delicate operation of reattaching the base. But as a bonus, it still has this coating, so just a little bit of glue around the inside, and it'll fit snugly on there. And, this be a matter of threading through the six pins. I'm used to just doing the five, but this will have the extra challenge of getting this guy on there as well. So, uh, I guess that'll be it for now. Uh, as usual, I don't know when I'll get to it, but I will someday. And I hope you enjoyed this look at an Admiral 10-inch portable set from around 1957.